Welcome everyone to our Supply Chain Council webinar for today. Uh, this is the second in the, in the series on the M4SC overview and today we'll be covering the strategy management layer. Uh, we are recording. Uh, we do have the ability now to post the recording on YouTube which makes it much simpler to <laughs> to listen to the, to the recordings. And in addition, that link is also being posted on the M4SC research page, which is on the council website under uh, resources, under the resources tab on the home page. Um, you can please do type your questions in. Uh, Joe and I can both see them in the questions box on your screen. So please type those in. We'll make sure all of them are answered. And I'm going to go right ahead and turn this over to Joseph Francis, Executive Director of the, of the Council. Um, I think that you, most of you have been on the last session as well. So I think I'm going to just go ahead and please welcome Joe Francis to uh, take it from here. Joe? All right. Thank you, Melinda. Um, I want to thank everyone who's coming into the call today. And uh, as Melinda mentioned, we had a call last week, which was sort of the general overview of M4SC. Um, over the next four or five weeks, we're going to be doing some specific overviews of the content of M4SC. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about strategy management. And um, primarily, this is to get people to look at what kind of problems they've had in strategy, um, how M4SC can address a lot of those issues and to garner interest into getting people to participate in the research teams coming up uh, October and November for continuing and advancing development of a common standard in supply chain management. Um, just to review for everybody who's on the line or may or may not have been through last week, um, what we define and what we've come to sort of visualize M4SC is a set of capabilities or processes or functions within a business that basically start with business strategy, um, take that, analyze it, look at the different contexts and components and needs and customers and so forth, um, turn that into a supply chain strategy through a set of roughly um, 13 processes that we're going to walk through today. Um, this supply chain strategy once it's well defined is then layered and in turn drives sort of the tactical, physical supply chain setup. Um, the supply chain network definition then is optimized to meet the strategic goals and performance requirements. From that point, um, inside the network, we begin to look at the plants and the warehouses and the freight channels and the suppliers and the customers and their processes. And what we like to do is make sure those supply chain processes are managed, optimized, sort of defined to support strategic network goals. Um, then finally, within this whole sort of chain, processes are defined and require resources to operate them. So a resource may be a person, maybe software, maybe machinery. What we like to do is make sure then that the resources for the processes have the appropriate skills, have the appropriate uh, capabilities, um, have the right configuration to execute the process which supports the network, which supports the strategy, which supports the business strategy. So that's the driving layer. Um, each of these layers also has a feedback. So if, you know, I can't configure a network to meet my strategy, I have to alter my strategy. If I can't source adequate resources to um, run a process, I have to modify the process. So there is a feedback through the system to make sure that it's a closed loop. And also each of these layers, even though it you know, primarily gets its input from an from a upper layer or upper kind of analysis, um, they can also take drivers such as a change in business context, um, you know, problems with liquidity in 2008-2009 would drive a change in supply chain strategy, they're not business strategy. Um, you might have a supplier going out of business, um, which might severely alter your customer base, which would require a change 
and configuration of your supply chain network, but not your strategy. So in each case, there might be an environmental alteration that drives the process or the team or the function to go re-examine what it's doing and make sure it's configured to meet the um, needs of the overall business strategy. Also want to emphasize here, this is not a process, this is not rather a project flow. These are a series of processes and from that perspective, we like to drive businesses away from managing, you know, trying to do a set of tiger team or optimization projects and more to have continuous adaptation of the strategy network process and resource to match the business context and business strategy requirements so that you don't get into crisis management or sort of uh, drag everyone out of their day job and you know, put them on a team to go fix the problem. Problems should be anticipated and managed in the normal course of business. We find the best businesses do this and best businesses have the kind of capabilities we're putting into these areas. So from that, um, I'm going to talk now mostly about the supply chain strategy layer and focus on its inputs and outputs, um, the kind of problems that it addresses. Um, I'm going to walk you through the major components of the function of managing strategy in the company. I'll talk a little bit about the drivers, what, what, what causes strategy to be altered um, you know, and to be articulated, um, how we see uh, the components of the strategy layer used by organizations which adopt uh, M4SC for their use, and I want to talk about the future evolution of this and hopefully some of the kinds of things we'd like to see coming out of uh, research teams around strategy. Um, if you feel necessary to you know, ask a question, go ahead and, and do it. Um, as I go forward on this, um, if, uh, Melinda can interrupt me if there's a question relevant to the slide at hand. Um, otherwise, we'll accumulate them and address them at the very end. Okay. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about common problems in supply chain strategy. And I want to start out by understanding what is strategy and, and how does this put in, you know, sort of sit into supply chain. And our view primarily is that strategy is a way of prioritizing basically measured outcomes, the performance of a supply chain, whether, you know, the priority is reliability or the priority is uh, cost or assets, prioritizing those to meet business requirements. Common problems that people in supply chain encounter in trying to look at supply chains that way are, first off, they don't really have a systematic approach to strategy. So, you know, frequently, you know, you'll have multiple business divisions will all kind of come together but say, you know, they'll articulate their strategy a different way. So one business division may end up saying, you know, my strategy is uh, I want to be reliable. Um, another business division may say my strategy is to be have the best customer experience. Well, they may mean the same thing and they may not. The problem is unless you're using a common approach to defining strategy, um, you're going to get a sort of a hodgepodge of different kinds of uh, focal points and prioritizations that across a business don't allow you to compare which business is performing better. Um, it, it doesn't allow you to train people in managing strategy. There's just a lack of an overall system. And this is one of the things I also talked about last week that sort of uh, bedevils um, high-level business executives is that, you know, lacking an overall system for doing supply chain management. Um, in particular, there's a lack of systematic strategy and, and articulating that. Second really common problem in supply chain strategy is the idea that there's one size fits all. And, you know, <clears throat> a great example of this is you know, going into a company that says, you know, we have one supply chain. Our focus on that supply chain is to have one day order cycle time. Um, that's what all of our customers want everywhere. And that's fine. I can go into another business that's in identically the same industry. And what they've actually done is they've set have, you know, 20 special supply chains defined. Each one prioritizes either slightly different focus or slightly different metrics. So um, some of the priority may be one-day cycle time. Some other supply chains, the priority may be a five-day cycle time. 
Uh, other supply chains, the issue may be uh, reliability has to be 99.5%. Other supply chains, I have to be incredibly effective at inventory. It turns out that, according to research um, from PwC and others, the most effective supply chain organizations have more supply chains defined than parity or badly performing organizations. And those supply chains also have very discrete, um, unique strategies to match the customer requirements and market. So this is a very common problem is over grouping or the concept of I want to streamline all of my supply chains into one size fits all. This doesn't work in strategy. Um, third big problem in working with what we would call supply chain strategy is a really big confusion between strategy tactics and execution. So, you know, I, I've heard many supply chain professionals say, you know, our strategy this year is to get a particular ERP system into place, or our strategy this year is we're going to outsource um, a particular piece of our supply chain. That, that's a tactic. That, that's, that's a particular way I might configure my network to meet a strategy, but that's not the definition of a strategy. Um, you know, these are very tactical, um, um, sort of put into place new physical flows to meet a strategy, but that's not defining a strategy. And third off, um, you even get um, deep confusion between execution and strategy where someone might say, my, my, my strategy this year is I'm going to have uh, daily or weekly, you know, uh, SNOP review meetings. That, that's all the way down to the saying my strategy is to have a business process or particular practice in place. So there's a big confusion all the way down to that level. Best, the best companies define their supply chains. They have a system. They define their supply chains very carefully. And then for those supply chains, they define the strategy. And they look at another team or function or organization to explore the tactics to meet the strategy and define and manage the execution to meet the strategy. But they keep those fairly, fairly separated. That's a good thing and a bad thing. Um, some businesses um, may define a strategy really well, but they don't connect it well to tactics and connect it well to execution. So one of the things we're looking for here is address all three of these, but also to connect strategy, tactics, and execution together. Um, Big, big problem in strategy, and probably I don't know how many times I've gone through this and heard this, and in fact, when we did the beta testing of M4SC um, training, this, is, this came up many times. I've defined supply chains. I've correctly articulated the strategy, but I haven't defined accountabilities. So, you know, if a supply chain doesn't have what we would call an accountable party or owner, uh, someone who's responsible for the resources in the supply chain, but also someone who is accountable for meeting the business strategy of the supply chain. Um, you can do all the work you want, but you're not going to be able to take and define a strategy that is agreed on and then moved into tactics and execution. So accountability and context is a really big problem in supply chain strategy. Um, the last one is, and I used to have a quote from the American uh, Benjamin Franklin, you know, strategy is wonderful, but uh, uh, measure, you know, measuring and executing it also counts for something. So one of the other big problems is you get very beautiful theoretical strategies, um, you know, and looking at uh, we would like to have a response, you know, we want to be the best customer, we want to have leadership, um, what I call fluffy kind of goals. Um, big problem is that if I don't take a strategy and turn it into something that's measurable, the measurable that has an accountable party who's answerable for it, that the measurable and accountable strategy then is moved into tactics and execution. Um, that measurable, accountable, strat integrated strategy, you know, is not one size fits all as part of the system. The measurement of the strategy is critical. You know, I can have a destination in my car. But if I don't have a dashboard and I don't have any kind of navigation, if I don't know the miles, um, I'm going to have severe problems in understanding if I've reached my destination. So measurability, instrumenting a strategy, managing the performance surrounding the strategy, um, you know, is as critical as the definition itself and something I want to sort of look, look with the m system in our discussion today. 
So the components of m for sc and, and I'm going to refer back to those prior five problems, you know, we start with business plan analysis. So there's a procedure defined in m for sc This would be strategy procedure one, business plan analysis. So this is um, taking an existing business plan, which may be defined by the uh, line of business organization, looking at all the critical parameters in the business plan that impact the supply chain. So specifically, you're going to look at the combination of customers um, and product services. You're going to look at the context of financials, revenue, um, working capital, fixed capital. You want to look at the timing of the plan. Uh, and also, generally, business plans look at uh, what are the key differentiators for my line of business to competitors? Um, you know, what is the competitive landscape? Where, where are the pitfalls? What are the success factors? So understanding this business plan's analysis and defining, you know, the key five or ten components of it that you have to understand, very, very important. Big stumbling block for a lot of organizations because, you know, unless supply chain is viewed strategically, as I alluded to in last week's presentation, it's very difficult for the supply chain to have the credibility to actually have access to what could be considered private or confidential business plans. There are techniques for reverse engineering business plans that we review in InfraSC, um, but this is, a, this is a starting point. If you don't know the business plan, if you don't know the necessary outcomes, um, it's impossible to define a strategy to meet something you don't know. Okay. Um, second big piece of this is supply chain segmentation, and I can't overemphasize the interest in the specific techniques put forth in m in supply chain segmentation, um, particularly looking at, um, you know, how to examine quickly the combinations of uh, customers and products as unique supply chains. I call this enumeration because, you know, they're literally listed as these are the supply chains in the business. Um, understanding some of the history of those segments um, or future plans of those segments that are being put together. Um, we add two more processes in the defined supply chain arena, grouping. So um, many organizations could easily define you know, thousands of supply chains. Um, what's important in strategy is to combine the segments and supply chains so that where they have all the same features that you need to use for management, um, you know, you create um, sort of grouped supply chains which share a common strategy and share, you know, infrastructure and focus for execution. So there is a technique to the grouping and a very important feature of trying to reduce the complexity of supply chain segmentation. Finally, um, you know, say I've gotten 10,000 supply chains down to 20 or 50, um, I need to prioritize those supply chains in terms of time and effort or other resources that I'm going to use to perform strategic management of those supply chains, you know, because frankly, uh, not all supply chains are equal in their business impact, in their complexity, in their revenue impact, um, a, a number of different dimensions. So we'd like to go through and prioritize them um, and understand how we're going to proceed with uh, further strategic planning. Okay. Um, from the management context now in strategy, we apply two really off-the-shelf business tools, but instead of applying, for instance, SWOT analysis to a line of business where you're trying to understand uh, the strengths and weaknesses, you know, within a market, we look at the SWOT at the business, uh, at the supply chain level, and individually in terms of its unique business context for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. A big part of the SWOT analysis is to understand, as I create a strategy, um, what are the opportunities in the supply chain which can influence the priorities, and also the threats in the supply chain which, which also may influence the priorities and strategy. So I begin to combine both um, later on, you know, product features, customer demand features of a channel, but also the competitive environment to make sure I'm prioritizing the right features for, for, for performance. Um, a second big piece of this in the management context is the RACI analysis, so that um, for each supply chain, I have an owner. Um, you know, and some and really great companies have gone through segmentation and, and all the other pieces within strategy, um, but if they don't get ownership allocated, 
so that someone's accountable for supply chains um, in terms of performance and possibly someone who owns the resources for the supply chain, say you have shared resources, um, that those are well defined and in particular you also may have consulted and informed business areas which helps you to align or to plan across supply chains strategically or, or even with non-supply chain functions. So the RACI analysis is done at the supply chain level and SWOT analysis is done at the supply chain level as opposed to more you know, traditionally done at the, at the line of business level. And I want to go back a slide and just to ask the audience at this point in terms of questions, does any of this seem odd or unusual or something you've not heard of? Because the problem here is that companies do these five elements, six elements, but what it is is it's, it's, it's either not disciplined, uh, it's not a structured team, it's ad hoc, and our advocacy is to make sure this is not ad hoc, it's structured, it's a repeatable process um, you know, that I'm actively managing. So the last couple of pieces of strategy are define the strategy. So per supply chain, uh, identify and articulate the key performance priorities which match the business plan, product, and customer segment characteristics. So without delving into a lot of detail, we use SCORE strate um, um, strategic attributes um, to use for prioritization. So we identify which attributes are the most important or the ones where in a particular market I need to be in the highest percentile performance which attributes are slightly less important, which ones provide no uh, particular competitive value. Um, generally speaking, um, if, you know, to explain this a little bit more fully, um, if I, for instance, had a spare part supply chain, generally speaking, the priority supply chain strategic priority on, that, on the spare parts is um, responsiveness. I have to generally fulfill the orders very fast in spare parts. Uh, regardless of the, the material type. Um, you know, by contrast, if I have an engineer to order, say, a large custom project, you know, uh, material that I'm building for a client, um, their strategic priority, that client's is not going to be cycle time, you know, it's not going to be the, the um, sort of overall how fast I can fulfill the order. It's going to be that when I commit to deliver that engineered material, that I meet my commitment very accurately, have a very high reliability for the supply chain. So supply chain strategy tends to be determined by a combination of product features, um, particular market features for that product, and in general should be determined by the, what the customers are really wanting as the output for themselves. Um, once I've defined the strategy, I've got you know, those kinds of uh, priorities put together, I follow a process to create a scorecard where I, I choose standard metrics. So, you know, from the company's standard metric list, uh, we normally would just say you score metrics off the shelf, um, augmented by your customer co company standard metrics. Um, so I choose those to ensure an accurate instrumentation or measurement system around the achievement of the strategy. So for every attribute of a supply chain, the five main attributes, I have at least one metric that I use to measure the performance of the supply chain for that attribute. So small scorecard may be uh, five metrics, a large scorecard may be um, you know, a dozen multi-level metrics to look at the performance of an attribute and even do quick ongoing diagnostics for the most important attributes. Once the scorecard is defined, I want to look at the network that underlies, the physical network that underlies that scorecard so that I can get the context for gathering data for measuring the current state of the supply chain. So I have to have a network defined so I know which plants and channels and factories and warehouses that I actually can go get data from within, for instance, an ERP system or I may need to go to customers for sample data or, you know, or through partners for EDI data that would give me information about performance. Um, once the network's well defined, I actually go through a traditional statistical data capture process um, to get data relevant to the scorecard to assess my current performance in that arena. 
Um, you know, and hopefully everyone has some Six Sigma kind of people in their organization who understand statistical sampling um, to make sure that the data is relevant, it's credible, um, and that it's, it's matching the appropriate definition within, um, for instance, SCORE, so that later on it's benchmarkable outside the organization using standard metrics, uh, score metrics from standard benchmarking resources. Which leads us to the last piece. Um, I want to do quantitative benchmarking of my current performance, strategic performance, ideally against my competitive landscape. So I want to look at, um, if I'm a company that builds bathroom tiles, I want to look at other companies that produce bathroom tiles. Um, optionally, I may want to look um, at prior history in my own company or across the company, maybe in different regions, to gain more perspective on the data that I've gathered from my data capture and network um, to assess whether the data is credible and to understand the trends so that when I go into a detailed quantitative benchmarking against competitors, um, I, can, I can do a, a much more credible and understandable analysis of any gaps that I find between my performance and competitors' performance according to my strategy. So these are the seven, five basic features of the measurement of my supply chain strategy. Then last couple of things I want to do is um, I want to make sure that for the now the defined scorecard and the defined strategy, um, do I have the right accountabilities for the metrics themselves in the responsible areas to achieve those metrics. Um, and, and for one thing that I found that's important to look at at this stage is do I have a conflict? Am I, am I getting accountabilities which are creating conflicts in metrics performance? Am I having conflicting strategies? Am I having conflicting ownership? So this is something that's very important to resolve now um, in terms of what I do. This is a gap. And um, in terms of defining the outcome of the strategy uh, team, you know, then I need to understand what to do around those racy gaps on the metrics. So the last stage is I'm going to combine elements of my business plan, uh, elements of my SWOT analysis, I'm going to look at my racing, I'm going to look at the benchmarking analysis, and then all of that combined I'm going to use into a determination of my final strategic numeric performance targets, and then I'm going to look at the gaps against those targets, and look at plans for um, achieving those targets, whether those plans might be feedback to my business planning organization to say, hey, um, you know, I can't achieve the strategy with the working capital you've defined, or I can't achieve, you know, this strategy you've defined a order cycle time, however the industry order cycle time is much bigger or much smaller. So you want to have some feedback around the gaps. Um, I may need to make organizational changes. So uh, people that may have been put into place where there's conflict around metrics or resources or priorities, uh, I resolve the organizational issues. Um, I may also at this stage simply say, hey, strategy looks great. I understand the metrics and the priorities. I want to pass this off to the network team then to analyze how the fiscal networks are going to be set up to make the strategy occur, or there may be other types of changes I need to put into place. Um, you know, uh, maybe I just need to get out of that line of business altogether. I can't meet the strategy, and um, you know, it, there, there's no chance of me meeting the strategy at all. Um, and um, the business environment has changed. So a lot of different kinds of outcomes. But I do the gap analysis, and then I make a determination or a set of recommendations about what the business should be doing with their supply chains. Okay, this pretty much finishes the strategy process. And the outcome of it at this stage pretty much is just um, a series of enumerated supply chains, um, a set of strategies around the supply chains, um, a set of metric targets for the supply chains, and a set of, um, you know, what are the next steps for other organizations to take the data around this. So what drives this kind of process? Um, you know, businesses go through quarterly say, let's say, adjustments to business planning, um, or they may do an annual business planning cycle. A lot of businesses may, in addition to that, have a three-year or five-year long-term business planning cycle. So for all of those, 
you know, it's a, these are great inputs to basically say, here's, you know, new plans, um, here's the strategy that matches this plan, and what am I going to do to implement this? What are the pieces that I put into place around this? Um, and, and, you know, another piece may be, um, I've got to do a replanning of my business plan in reaction to a market change. Hey, that's going to trigger a review of supply chain. Another driver of strategy are major market events. So you may not change your business environment. You may not say, hey, I'm going to change my revenue plan or my margin plan. But I may have an event like a hurricane um, or, um, for instance, capital markets collapse, so the cost of money dramatically changes. So my inventory plans are, are going to be haphazard. Changes to a financial environment, changes to a competitive landscape, um, competitors enter, competitors exit. Um, you know, we just heard that um, Samsung is exiting the you know, desktop computer market. Customer base changes from, you know, from one year to the next. Um, you know, I can find an entire government um, area may switch how they are doing procurement or how they want to um, you know, source or who their partners are. A major market event can can force you to reassess your, your supply chain strategy. Um, third on this is um, feedback from other layers. So there may be an inability for the network to achieve a performance goal. So I can define reliability goals I can't meet. I can define cycle time goals I can't meet with the network. Um, I also may have a conflicting goal where um, I may set up a strategy and where the performance metrics for the given resource is conflicting with each other, this needs to be a feedback from another layer to resolve in strategic analysis. So in, in each case, it's not just a single purpose, hey, go, go analyze the business plan and then derive a strategy, but there needs to be an active team that's managing multiple changes to the business environment and then reviewing what impacts they have on supply chain strategy. I'm going to switch to Melinda for a moment. Um, there's, there's a question that's come up. Melinda? Yes, thank you. Yes, I have somebody just asking um, if we go back to uh, just, just stating uh, what you mean by basically by supply chain. Someone's just asking, does this mean like your high level uh, supply chain of like level one metrics, or is this like an ind individual supply chains, or um, supply chain routes they're asking, or I guess just there's just a little bit of, they're just asking for a little clarity on at this stage uh, what uh, level of the supply chain we're talking about. So we're, we're really talking about individual supply chains. So we're defining a supply chain um, as we've done through SCORE literature as a combination, unique combination of a customer, customer channel, uh, product or service, or product service family. So there may be a supply chain for one specific spare part for, let's say, a company that builds washing machines. That's a supply chain. There may be a supply chain for the washing machine in a given market. That's a supply chain. Um, the, what we're not talking about is um, gross level categories of supply chains, like a build-to-order supply chain or build-to-stock. That's a, that's a very high-level grouping of supply chains. We're talking about the specifics. Each supply chain, each combination of customer, the customer segment, product or product family, each combination of the two has a unique set of requirements to fulfill what the customers want when they choose to be in that market. Um, my suggestion is that um, the, we have a deeper discussion of this in some of the executive um, seminars that are around the world or um, maybe address the question directly back you know, to us after the presentation. But there's a lot of literature from the council and also specifically around um, uh, the SCORE framework class in what is a supply chain, how do you define it, what are the components of the supply chain. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Melinda. Um, what's the use of M4SC? Okay, what, what's the purpose of this stuff? So this is basically the definition, you know, not of a great strategy team, 
but it's sort of the minimum requirements that we expect to see to know that a business is managing supply chain strategy. So rather than depending upon, you know, some sort of, you know, guru at the center of Spiderweb who's, you know, saying here's what the strategy is going to be, um, we, you know, companies that have these capabilities in place and are using them routinely according to the company's definition of how it wants to manage, but it, these are the minimum capabilities we expect to see in place. It's like a checklist almost. Are you doing this? Are you doing that? Are you doing this? And therefore, we know that you probably got the best, uh, most reasonable possible strategy for your supply chains. Um, another great use of this is the definition of roles and responsibilities for a functional strategy team. So if you've got a special group, in, and we see this often center of competency, where um, they may be working with lines of business to help them define their strategies. These are great lists, checklists of roles and responsibilities um, and capabilities for people to understand and what do they do. Um, a variance on this is, is basically to say, I may not have a center of excellence, but I may have strategy teams scattered through lines of business. This is a great way I can do a check and make sure that um, all of these components have someone accountable and responsible for performing them for a line of business. So it's a good driver, just a quick analysis to do a RACI um, chart using these uh, 13 uh, processes. Um, the fourth and probably the most important is to help um, create a definition of a company's company standard process. I go back to that, you know, we need a process for management. So this is a great way, off the shelf way of defining a company standard process for execution of strategy management. So, you know, we're not expecting anyone to take these once they've gone through the training, you know, much, you know, straight out of the box. But like SCORE, you should use these to classify what you're doing, um, augment processes that are missing a lot of capabilities, and to see that this you know, really meets a lot of the minimal requirements of performing um, strategy management. And the, and the last thing, which is interesting to me, you know, I find quite an interesting idea, is I can go in a given company with a group of multiple lines of business and basically ask the question, hey, here's 13 capabilities. Um, let's look at your five or 10 lines of business. Do you have, you know, what's the level of maturity of strategy in every line of business? and ask the question, why? And is there a relationship between their strategy and the line of business performance? So this is a great checklist and detailed assessment of the maturity of the strategy capability within an organization. So, you know, this is multiple uses for these kinds of frameworks, but for this one in particular, because it's prescriptive, rather than a classifying framework like SCORE, you can really dig in and ask, you know, some fairly serious questions you know, are we doing against what would be considered a minimum good standard? How well are we doing it? Is it part of a center of competency? Do I have the right accountabilities? Is this someone's part-time job, full-time job? You know, do I have enough resources dedicated to this in relation to my overall business? So that's one of the main uses of this framework is just to go back, look at yourself, uh, train your people, make sure they have the capabilities for performing you know, really industry-leading strategic uh, management. Um, I see, Melinda, I see a question from Bob Ferrari. Right, yeah. Um, yeah, Bob's asking about how, how you would envision M4SC in the context of the existing SNOP process at a company. Um, and in, you know, how does this yeah. relate to SNOP? So I think SNOP is, um, much more tactical execution focused. It's, you know, I, I'm looking at, um, you know, what's going to be going on this month is, you know, more of a traditional SNOP timeline. Um, this is basically broad, looking much more broadly at, do I have the right strategy for the market? So, you know, I'm not sure I would call it an augmentation as much as just, uh, you know, completely SNOP doesn't segment supply chains, SNOP doesn't um, look at product characteristics for the value that customers are trying to get from supply chains. SNOP is much more around lining resources. There is a component to strategy about resource and prioritization, but this is more about prioritizing metrics performance, not resource performance. So 
So from that perspective, I'd say this is a very specific methodology. It's a very prescriptive methodology rather than an augmentation of the SNOP. Um, lastly, I'd just like to talk a little bit and then open up in about five minutes about um, the teams. So the evolution of this is we know there's a lot of missing stuff from this as a minimum. Um, you've looked at a lot of companies and said, you know, what kind of processes do we see in centers of competency around strategy? But we've actually had feedback and data trainings and other circumstances to say, hey, what about green and sustainability as part of strategy? And I think that's a great question. Um, another big question that came up is, well, why aren't you doing supply chain strategy while you're doing business planning? Why do you, you know, have the problem where business planning may not understand the supply chain competitive landscape and you tend to get sort of a thrashing back and forth between business, you know, and I'm a <laughs> strong advocate for people that have a lot of credibility, strategic credibility in supply chain, they should be part of the business planning process. How does that evolve within the M4SC framework? Uh, another big question is, are there measurements that we can apply to this, the 13 strategic processes? You know, how often is a strategy revised? Uh, um, you know, how well did the strategy meet business plans? These kinds of things. Or also the question of, are there best practices around some of these processes that we haven't seen um, and that may, you know, work really well? So as an example of the best practice may be, hey, when I'm doing the segmentation, uh, a real a best practice to do this is to use, you know, existing data from my ERP system and, you know, pivot table analysis of all the different kind of what-if options for grouping. So the, there's stuff that we don't know about, love to see uh, evolve into the framework. Um, fourth item is the usage and usability of the processes we define. So, you know, we've defined 13 processes. Um, we'd like to understand um, that over time, as companies adapt, use them for us, see, are all 13 really valuable? Are these the ones that companies say are sort of the fundamental or the minimum requirement? And then the second question is, how's the usability? Are these processes something I can really implement? Uh, are they easy to train? People can relatively, you know, with uh, you know, low overhead understand, if they understand supply chain, that they can use these processes effectively. What's missing to make them either usable or um, usability, the effectiveness of the process? Um, question, another big question that's come up around it for SC training um, and review is, how do I, you know, what are the adoption factors? How do I get an organization to adopt these processes? What are the drivers for saying, hey, you know, I like processes one through eight, but not nine through two? What, what are the kinds of factors that drive adoption of the M4SC strategy components? Um, how do we put those in place? You know, are there best practices around adoption? Are there metrics that businesses like to see around strategy before it goes in and starts, you know, either adapting or altering existing processes. Um, third is, uh, are there industry-specific versions of this strategy? So for instance, is oil and gas done differently than pharma in terms of strategic planning? So we know there's going to be some difference between, let's say, public and private sector. Um, so for instance, strategy in private, in the rather public sector, let's say the military, they have slightly different view of the five strategic components versus private sector, which has a profit motive. So, you know, understanding some of those differences is also valuable as we evolve the framework forward. So, you know, interested in those impacts and, you know, how we get the team working around this. So just to conclude before we go into more of the questions, um, you know, Supply Chain Council is a, a, a non-for-profit industry group basically does a lot of research in supply chain, supply chain management. Um, we've established this into the SCORE framework for operational reference, operational processes. Um, we're now finishing up M4SC in terms of management processes for supply chain. Uh, we're a global organization, volunteer driven, and we're very interested in research and then turning the research into public and private company training to help companies have the best possible supply chain. Um, this webinar today is part of an overall introduction series for M4SC. 
Last week we had the getting started with the InfraSC program, overview structure, review, conversations. Today we review the details of strategic management. Next week we'll be reviewing details of network management, process management a week later. We'll repeat the introduction on how to get started around 12th of August, and then we'll conclude the 22nd of August with uh, resource layer problems addressed. Um, 27th of August, we begin volunteer planning um, for the conclusion of the year. There are two public trainings in Houston on 10 and 12 September on the network and process areas. 16th of September, 23rd, 30th, and 17th of October, we begin to do the detailed team volunteer formation processes, so team, strategic focus, planning of um, the activities, and then the tactical focus. Um, of, of importance in that is on the 16th of September, identifying who's more interested in strategy, who's more interested in network, process, or resource layers, develop the leadership team around those priorities, uh, and make sure we've got well-established teams in the four different sections. Um, 21st of October, we conclude with the 2014 training with the resource management. Um, then beginning in 28 October, we would like to see individual team research meetings so that everyone has an, an understanding of the baseline process. Not a summary as I've done today, but a deeper reading of the full m 4 sc framework and an understanding of the flow of each process and, and how it um, to combine together to form a sort of a top-down layered approach to management. Um, 11th of November, continued individual team research. Um, 25th of November, preparation for Palm Springs. 5th of December, we have a hosted, SEC hosted event in Palm Springs uh, for the presentation and review of m 4 sc global team work. Um, and understanding subsequently, December 9th and 16th, around what are the gaps, um, what are the outcomes of Palm Springs, and what's the agenda for the research program for 2014. Call to action, um, continue along with these uh, web, uh, webinars and presentations for complete review of the high level pieces in vent for sc and try to find an affinity where you're interested in that layer and the components. Sign up as a research volunteer with Melinda, looking at an area that best matches your expertise. Uh, look at assuming a leadership position in the team. Provide us with review and feedback on the m sc system. Um, call to action is to participate in the hosted Palm Springs event. Meet all the other research teams in infra, uh, around m 4 as well as uh, Lean Six Sigma and others. Join our global community. Help us drive meaningful change in supply chain management worldwide. Help create a useful global standard and help create a well-used global standard in supply chain management. So with that, Casper um, Hunch is our research director. He's available by email for questions about some of the components of strategy you heard today. Um, if you wish to be a volunteer and learn more information, please contact Melinda Spring at Supply Chain Council. And for more detailed information about Supply Chain Council in general, please visit our website or um, send a request to the info at supplychain.org around membership training, education, executive leadership events, and, uh, and other components. So with that, I'd like to switch over to Melinda to referee for the next 15 minutes uh, questions surrounding the strategy layer. Thank you, Joe. Um, here's a question on, uh, well, there's a lot included in this question. Um, how are uh, topics like variety management, supply chain visibility, supply chain risk management, supply chain complexity management uh, aligned with um, the overall supply chain strategy? That's just the first part of the question. <laughs> you know, I think that's a, I think that's a great question. <laughs> I think this is why we want research teams to come forward. Um, I'm not going to answer them here, but I'd like, this is where we like research teams and individuals to come forward and say, you know, is supply chain risk management a component of strategy? Um, is it a component of network? Is it a component of process? Where does it appropriate lie? What are the processes we should use to manage that? Um, supply chain visibility. What's the appropriate layer within management? Um, what are the components of visibility? How do these affect, you know, how do we make sure that they're addressed? 
This is precisely the kind of questions we want uncovered within the research teams and precisely the kind of questions we'd like the research teams to come back and say, here's the standard response to these kinds of problems and areas. So I don't mean to kind of brush off the question, but questions are what drive the research agenda, and these are great questions. Yeah. Um, how does, uh, here's a different one, um, how does supply chain cost or company affordable cost fit into the strategy layer? So um, I do recommend that everyone that wants to work in uh, supply chain strategy and InfraSC has the SCORE framework training. There are five attributes of um, supply chain metrics. Um, there's reliability, which is do the orders, deliveries of the supply chain, are they on time, complete, uh, undamaged, and with correct data. Uh, second major uh, attribute is responsiveness. What's the cycle time uh, between taking an order from a customer and the customer signing off they've received it? Um, the third major attribute is um, flexibility or agility. It's the how quickly the supply chain adapts to market change. Those are customer-facing metrics. The two are attributes. The two business-facing attributes are one is cost and the second is um, assets. So cost relates to total supply chain landed cost and all of its components. Um, the attributes relate to both fixed and working capital and capital ratios to revenue. Um, so when we talk about strategy, we basically say of the five attributes, reliability, responsiveness, agility, cost, and assets, what's the number one most important attribute for this supply chain for these customers in this market? In some cases, the most important attribute may be cost. Very common in commodity-type markets is, is a focus on cost. Um, in other kinds of markets, the most important focus may be on reliability or inventory or other attributes, but cost is one of the five attributes of supply chain performance, um, and there's a great discussion and you know a long investigation of that in SCORE and in the SCORE framework training. Right, thank you. Um, I don't have any, any other specific questions uh, at this point other than um, uh, we want to make sure that you know that the, the M4SC uh, in basic information page is linked from the home page. It's under the resources tab on the home page. And that is also where you can go to sign up to be a volunteer. And then you will receive all of the information as, we're, as we produce it on, on, on the work. Um, anything else, please type it in now. Otherwise, I think we may be at the conclusion for today. One thing I'd like to ask the people on this, and particularly people who are going through all of the different presentations on the detailed components of M4SC, please send Melinda your feedback on the presentation, because we want to make sure that it's a high-level presentation. It's fairly summarized, but that it's also um, detailed enough to get whet your appetite and for you to understand whether it's, whether it's going to be of interest to you to participate with the groups. Absolutely. Yes, and we have, we have a very international group on again today. So there's people from all over the world. Um, so again, uh, I wanted to note that we will we'll accommodate your time zones and your schedules when we do the volunteer, uh, the volunteer work. So I don't hesitate because you're uh, on the other side of the world to volunteer. All right. Thanks, everybody. And I'm going to switch out of the presentation. And I look forward to uh, seeing people come in next week on the network layer. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good day, everybody.